everybody, welcome to another video installment by your favorite podcast, Keys with Jet. I'm Red, and today we've got a treat for you. We're taking a trip to the program started by the U.S. Air Force in the 1960s called the Wild Weasel Program. It still goes on today. Apparently, they get a bunch of crazy pilots to fly at radar stations and SAMs, get locked on and shot at them. Those people are crazy people and awesome people. Hope you enjoy the video. Stay tuned to the end. And I'll see you later. Welcome back to Cues the Jet Podcast, where we dive headfirst into the fascinating and occasionally insane world of military aviation. Today, we're peeling back the layers of one of the most audacious programs in the U.S. Air Force history, the Wild Weasels. If you're thinking, Wild Weasels, sounds like a rock band or a biker gang, well, you're not entirely wrong. These guys were the rock stars of the skies, and the enemy radar operators definitely felt the heat. Let's rewind to the early 1960s. America's involvement in Vietnam was ramping up, and our pilots were running into a big scary problem. SAMs. No, not the friendly uncle you avoided Thanksgiving, but surface-to-air missiles. These nasty little gadgets were wreaking havoc on our aircraft, turning the skies into a deadly game of dodgeball, where the balls exploded. In 1965, after losing several aircraft to these SAMs, the U.S. Air Force said, Enough is enough. Let's hit these guys where it hurts. Thus, the Wild Weasel program was born. With the official motto, YGBSM, or You Gotta Be Shitting Me, yes, you heard that right. Even the pilots were skeptical of their own mission sanity. The idea was simple, at least on paper. Find the SAM sites, poke them with a stick, and then when they fired up their radars, a lock on you, you'd fire back. Simple, right? Well, not exactly. The first aircraft chosen for this death-defying task was the F-100 Super Saber, a plane that was already past its prime. It was like sending your grandpa to win a street fight armed with a cane. But hey, it worked. Kind of. The early wild weasels designated as F-100F were essentially test pilots playing a deadly game of cat and mouse. Imagine the conversations in that cockpit. Hey Bob, did you see where that missile came from? Nope, but I felt it go by. Uh, must be close. The F-100s were soon followed by the F-105 Thunder Chief, or THUD, as it was affectionately called. This was a sturdier, faster aircraft than the Wild Weasel version. The F-105G became the true backbone of the program. The THUD could carry a bunch of anti-radiation missiles, like the AGM-45 Shriek, designed to home in on those pesky radar signals and deliver some explosive justice. Now let's be clear. Flying the Wild Weasel mission was like being a guy who pokes a bear just to see if it's hungry. If the bear was asleep, great, but if it wasn't, well, you better have your running shoes on. Many of these pilots did not make it back, but those who did became legends. As the Vietnam War dragged on the Wild Weasels evolved, by the 1970s, the F-4 Phantom II became the mainstay. The F-4G Wild Weasel V was packed with the latest electronic warfare gear allowing it to not just find and destroy SAM sites, but also coordinate and tie strike packages. These guys weren't just the bait anymore, they were the hunters. The F-4 had a two-man crew with a pilot in the front and the EWO in the back, both sharing the glorious job of dancing with death. With their AGM-78 missiles and their trusty shrieks, they became the ultimate nightmare for enemy radar operators. Just when the bad guys thought they were safe, a phantom would pop up and remind them. So what about today? The Wild Weasel mission didn't end with the Vietnam War. It's still going strong. Though the aircraft had changed, the F-16CJs and the F-16TJs, known as Vipers, took over the role in the 1990s. These sleek, agile fighters carry advanced electronic warfare pods and precision-guided munitions, making them a deadly adversary for any modern air defense system. Today's wild weasels have a similar job as their forebears. Find the enemy's radar, make it blink, and then knock it out. Stakes are just as high, but the technology has come a long way. And let's not forget they still carry the YGBSM spirit in their hearts. Now it's not just about blowing things up, though that's still a big part of the job. Modern wild weasels are all about making the battlefield safer for everyone. By taking out enemy radars and SAM sites, they clear the path for other aircraft to complete their missions, whether it's bombing runs, reconnaissance, or air support. 
So, where does the Wild Weasel program stand today? Well, it's not going anywhere. As long as enemies have radars on SAMs, there will be a need for brave souls to fly into the danger zone and take them out. Whether it's with the cutting edge F-35s in the future, or even unmanned drones someday, the spirit of the Wild Weasel will live on. So next time you hear Wild Weasel pilots say, YGBSM, remember it's not just a motto, it's a way of life. These are the guys who laugh in the face of danger because quite frankly, they've probably seen worse. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Keys of the Jet Podcast. If you liked what you heard, hit that like button, subscribe for more military aviation content, and leave a comment below. Have a story or suggestion for a future episode? Drop it in the comments or hit us up on social media. Until next time, fly safe, aim true, and remember, you gotta be shitting me. Hey, welcome back from the V. I hope you enjoyed it. I learned a lot of information. It's cool that they use several different aircraft. Uh, the F-100s, uh, Super Saber, F-105, the F-4, and F-16, and eventually, and maybe now, the F-35. It's a pretty Nazi program, like I said in the beginning. You have to be a crazy person to be, put yourself in harm's way. But I guess they do it to, you know, uh, protect strike packages. I guess one of their mottos is, uh, first in, last out. Now where they go in and they just blow shit up and it's pretty freaking awesome. Also, with the, you gotta be shitting me motto as well, which I believe what I heard and I'd have to read more into it. I think he came from a wizzo when I first started and a pilot basically aimed the aircraft at a SAM site and the back seater was like, you gotta be shitting me. Well, you know, I think I'd do the same freaking thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed our other videos. The last one's about the B-1 bomber, the F-15, the C-47 Skytrain, and the KC-10. If you like to support the channel, go like, subscribe, hit the notification bell on YouTube. Go to Facebook, follow us. You can follow us on Instagram, Rumble, TikTok, X, um, you can also go sign up to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash keys to the jet podcast and become a paying member for $5 a month where you'll be able to help us bring you better content while by upgrading our gear where I'm able to go out to museums. Hopefully I can get onto base or even go to Boneyard, the Boneyard down in Arizona and take a look at, you know, some of the aircraft there and bring you live stuff yeah just not not just stuff from my office yeah like i said hope you enjoyed it i'll see you on the next one peace out